In this Adobe InDesign tutorial, you will learn the most important building blocks for book design. Start a new file and enter these presets. We're going with five and a half by eight and a half inches. We want four pages and check facing pages and primary text frame. These features will soon make sense. We want two columns and set the gutter to 0.25. The gutter is the space between columns. Set your margins for 0.5. I will show you how we can alter margins later. Now scroll down to your bleed. This is important in the graphic design print world. If you want any images or design elements to go to the edge of the page, you need to set your bleed here. A common measurement is 0.125. So let's go with that, then create. You will see these column guides aligning to the margins and gutter that we set. Notice the red line just slightly outside of the page. This is our bleed line. Any design element we want printed to the edge must be extended to this red line. I am using the typography workspace, which offers easy access to the pages panel. If you don't see pages, you can find it via the window dropdown. This panel presents an overview of our book layout, and it is here where we can add and delete pages. I will explain this top part shortly. As you can see, we can also zoom out to see our layout. I'll close the pages panel for now. There are a few ways to add images. For my book cover, I think it will be easiest to create my image frame first. This is what this tool does. I will click and drag to make a frame aligned to the bleed edges, and then file place or use the shortcut Command D or Control D for non-Mac users. Locate your image and click open. The image will appear in the frame as long as you have your frame selected. The image is coming in at its original dimensions, but we can adjust that by going to the direct selection tool and moving the image around. You may need to zoom out to see the edges of the image. You can scale down the image by dragging the corners in. You probably need to hold down your shift key to keep the proportions. So I'm scaling down and moving it around until I like how the image is filling the frame. I am scrolling down to pages two and three. This layout here is called a spread. Let's add another image. This time I will use file, place, get another cat photo, then click and drag to draw a frame around the size I think I want. To scale the image and frame together, hold down the shift and command key as you drag the corners. Make sure you are on the selection tool for that. Let's scroll down and insert our last image using the frame tool method. I'll click and drag to the bleed lines, but leave the top free for some text. Go to file, place, select your image and open or double click. I can use the direct selection tool to move the image around within the frame and I'll scale the image down a bit to bring more of it into frame. I'll also change my view mode to overprint preview. It's a personal preference. This way, I only see the bounding box of what I have selected. I find it less distracting. Another helpful tool is to use the hide guides feature. I turn these on and off all of the time using the shortcut command semicolon. We need a title. Let's create a text box with the type tool. I'll open my character palette to change the typeface and size, and I'll adjust the tracking a bit. I'll move it around until I like the placement. Now scroll down to the spread. Because in our setup, we checked primary text frame, each page already has a text frame in place. Double click to enter the text frame on the left page. Right click or go to type drop down and select fill with placeholder text. All text frames will fill with a pretend language and all frames are connected so that when you edit, text will move onto other pages seamlessly. That's what checking primary text frame does in the document setup. Now let's get this text to wrap around the cat. With that image selected, go to text wrap and select the third option called wrap around object shape. Then change the type to select subject. You will see a path in anchor points around the cat now. The cat has a white background, so I'll use my layers panel to move my cat behind the text. Then I'll go back to the text wrap to add some space between the path and text, referred to as offset. 0.1875 looks good to me. 
Notice that we can still move our image around and the text will keep readjusting. In fact, it's never a good idea to put a face in the fold of a spread, so I will move her to the left. You will see that a page has been added to handle the overflow text. We can delete this text as needed since it's just placeholder. Then in the pages panel, I will click on that last page, right click and delete page. I want to demonstrate that you can go into any page you want to customize the text frame options. Go to the object dropdown and text frame options. I'll change the number of columns to one. Then it looks like I need to delete that extra page again. Now I want to show you what this section is all about in the pages panel. This is a template we can customize if we want certain text or design elements to appear on multiple pages. Double click over that A parent area. It presents us with this template. Let's add page numbers. Draw a small text box at the bottom of the left page, type page, and then go to the type dropdown, insert special character, markers, and current page number. Now I will copy and paste that text box to save time, move it to the right page, place it in alignment, and right align. You can see now why you would want to differentiate between your left and right pages. We wouldn't want our page numbers getting lost in the fold. Take a look at the pages panel again. None is a way to remove a template style from individual pages. I'll do that now to my cover page. You just drag it onto the page. I meant to delete my text frame earlier from page one. You can see the text when I move my image to the back. Now I'll click on the text frame and hit my delete key. That will no doubt create an extra page again. Before I fix that though, I want to show you one more fun thing. It's called drop cap. Double click into the left side text frame and place the cursor after the first letter. Then open your paragraph panel and check out the drop cap feature. When we up the number to two, it's making our first letter bigger and dropping it to span two lines. I'll put in a few of these. Now I'll delete this text and page again. Looks like I have two extra pages to delete this time. Okay, now let's save our file. Go to the file dropdown, package, and we'll accept all of the defaults and click package. It may prompt you to save your file if you haven't yet. This will create a folder containing all of your assets. Here is how it saves. You've got your .indd InDesign file, PDF, fonts, and images in your links folder. Now, let's use the publish online feature. Give it a title. It doesn't like special characters. We want to export as spread, then click publish. Go to view document to check it out. Use the right and left arrows to move through the pages. We get to see pages two and three together because we chose that spread option. And this is where you can copy that link. We are done for now. Go create a booklet.